In the last couple of weeks, Canadians have been hearing and reading a lot about the issue of attempted foreign interference, particularly from China, in our elections. There have been questions raised about our democracy, our national security agencies, our parliament, and even our sovereignty. These questions strike us to the very core as Canadians. But today, I'm announcing that I will be appointing an independent special rapporteur who will have a wide mandate and make expert recommendations on combating interference and strengthening our democracy. And here we go again. That was Justin Trudeau promising to appoint a special rapporteur to look at allegations of Chinese election interference. He delivered this promise as though it would put things to rest and fill us all with confidence that things would be looked at thoroughly and fairly, and recommendations made by this rapporteur would be heeded and applied, and we need not worry our pretty little heads about a thing. And if you believe that, you have not been paying attention at all. Because we just had a hand-picked commission on the use of the Emergencies Act. And to no one's shock at all, they found that Trudeau did and could probably do no wrong. This despite the fact that a Senate vote, though required, was never taken on the use of the Act. And when it was about to be taken, they suddenly decided they didn't need to use it anymore, so we can all just move on and there's nothing to see here. I am absolutely, absolutely serene and confident um, that I made the right choice. And now they are admonishing the rest of us for ever wasting time on resources in the inquiry in the first place. Because the hand picked by Trudeau conclusion was that Trudeau did nothing wrong. So now Trudeau gets to hand pick someone else to decide if he should investigate himself. Because this isn't an investigation. A rapporteur is someone who will be appointed to decide if there should be an investigation or any sort of inquiry. Because, you know, they wouldn't want to waste money again like they did on the Emergencies Act. See how that works? As for China's part right now, well, they released a statement pointing out that any evidence that might be found to support the allegations is fabricated. So even if there is any evidence, it's not true and you're all probably racist for even looking. Also, the fact that we even think there may be interference is only because we are the ones who interfere, so we are just projecting and expecting them to have the same low standards of behavior as we have. Because they would never do such a thing. Not in a million years ever, and shame on you for even thinking it. But I still think it. Now, Trudeau has been pressed about this in the past. Was there any interference of any kind? Uh, interference in Canadians' aff affairs by foreign powers is an ongoing thing, whether it's cyber interference, whether it's interference with uh, communities here in Canada, uh, whether it's attempts to influence uh, the media. These are things uh, that go on on an ongoing basis and things that our, our intelligence agencies and police agencies uh, work very, very hard uh, to counter. Uh, but Canadians can be reassured that the integrity of our elections was not compromised. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. He still won't answer the question. The question was specifically about whether intelligence, law enforcement, or public servants briefed him or in any way informed him of any interference in any of our elections. The integrity of our elections was not compromised. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The question was not whether the election was compromised. The question was whether officials in intelligence, law enforcement, or the public service at any time informed the Prime Minister of allegations of any interference in our elections. Yes or no. This is actually painful to watch. Mr. Speaker, the uh, member opposite brought in the element of allegations of interference. I can confirm, uh, based on 
Uh, the news reports that a number of people have been remarking on for the past number of weeks uh, that I have never gotten any information from any of our security agencies or police officers or intelligence officials or public servants on any information on anyone receiving, uh, as a federal candidate, receiving money uh, from China, as the allegations highlighted. The bold leader of the opposition. The, the question wasn't whether or not he heard allegations of money going to a candidate from China. Um, obviously, money doesn't travel on a big ship from the other side of the Pacific and then go to the shore and then be delivered to a candidate. Uh, that is obviously a, a denial of an absurdity. The question is whether or not the Prime Minister ever got information from the public service, the police, or intelligence bodies on any interference of any kind by Beijing in our elections. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I got a report back uh, from our panel that was established, the experts established in the national security agencies to report back on whether or not our elections were subject uh, to foreign interference uh, and they confirmed that the elections uh, were held in full integrity, uh, the outcome uh, was not impacted, that Canadians can have full confidence in uh, the integrity of our elections in 2019 and 2021. And no matter how many times you ask him if there was any interference by the Chinese in our elections, he is going to answer a completely different question in response and tell us the outcome of our elections was not influenced at all. Because while Trudeau is tying himself up in knots trying to avoid the direct question of was there interference, the twist in to avoid is an answer in itself. So let's have a look at what might have been interfered with here. Because in doing so, we may also get to understand why the Conservatives have to tippy-toe around China like it's a sleeping dragon. Because I do believe they would love to point the finger loud and proud and say they did it as well as call them out on a host of other things. But they can't, because demographics. Because there are a huge amount of Canadians of Chinese descent here. Some of them even have family back there. And we all know how that gets exploited. So in the last elections, when there were robocalls and social media posts telling them that Conservatives would not be good for Canada and China relations, many Chinese Canadians complied. And I can't say I entirely blame them having heard about some of the persuasion tactics likely to be used if they didn't. But this story isn't just breaking now. This is from June of last year. The conclusion was reached then that China had influenced a lot of people's decisions when it came time to put a check mark on the ballot on election day. At the same time, the conservative platform promised to stand up to Beijing on human rights issues, move supply chains away from China, adopt policies against allowing Beijing state-owned entities to take over Canadian companies, and aim for less reliance on critical Chinese minerals, all of which would cost China profit, as well as the power and influence to affect Canada's policies. So I am looking at the math here. They don't want to lose influence. They don't want to be weakened. Somehow, a Conservative government represented those things to them. And at the same time, a Liberal government suited them just fine, which tells us what exactly about a Liberal government. And this isn't just about Chinese interference. This is also Chinese participation, that they may have actually run a candidate in the race. Farah, after an eight-month investigation, intelligence sources have told Global News that current Liberal MP Han Dong is alleged to have been supported by Beijing in 2019 and the Prime Minister's senior staff were warned about it. Caesars was concerned that Han Dong was connected to the People's Republic of China Foreign Interference Network in Canada, an official with knowledge of the brief told Global News. Despite the alleged warnings to his staff, Trudeau approved Dong's candidacy. They want a place in Parliament, and that comes with a say, because there has been much speculation about Han Dong. The Liberal MP accused of accepting support from the Chinese government. If you haven't heard about this by now, 
It was widely reported that he had help from the Chinese consulate in Toronto to become the Liberal candidate in 2019 for Don Valley North. In a rare act of actual journalism, Global News reported on allegations that the consulate had sent busloads of Chinese seniors to the Liberal nomination meeting with Han Dong's name written on their arm, and that CSIS suspected that Chinese international students were bussed in and told to vote for the preferred candidate if they wanted to maintain their student visas. When asked, his only response was that they followed the rules, which technically they did. Parties are private organizations, able to set their own rules. And you don't have to be a citizen to get a vote when it comes to party nominations. You just need to live in the riding and be a party member. So when Dong won, a surprise to absolutely no one, CSIS briefed the Liberal government on their concerns and asked that they rescind the nomination. Trudeau went ahead and approved his candidacy anyway. And then it was further reported by Global News that the Liberals then gave Dong the heads up that CSIS may be watching him. So I think it's worth a look at whose interests were being served in this scenario because I really don't think it was Canada's. And Han Dong is still an MP. And if you have a problem with that, you're a racist. I mean, what can you really do? And while we're on China's interference and influence in Canada, remember this story? China is accusing Canada of a smear campaign over those allegations making big headlines in our country this week. Allegations that China is secretly operating at least two different so-called police stations, in this case in Quebec. Report from the RCMP tonight. It's investigating claims of criminal activity at so-called police stations allegedly set up by China's government. The RCMP is investigating two Montreal area organizations as alleged Chinese police stations. Because if you wonder why a bunch of Chinese citizens could be bullied all the way from China into electing who China wants, this might help explain it. These stations are used to monitor and potentially threaten Chinese people who are living abroad, including those who are wanted by Chinese authorities back in China. According to a report published by human rights group Safeguard Defenders, it's one of dozens of such stations around the world, including three in predominantly Chinese neighborhoods in and around Toronto. The RCMP says it's investigating whether criminal activity is taking place. Safeguard Defenders says there is evidence people connected to these service stations have been involved in pressuring some nationals to return to China. According to Chinese state-run media, 230,000 telecom fraud suspects were educated and persuaded to return to China from overseas to confess to crimes from April 2021 to July 2022. Because if Beijing can't harass and imprison family members still in China, they don't have to reach across the globe to crack down on dissidents. Because they're already here. And their presence has been legitimized by our government's complete lack of interest in doing anything about it. At least until word got out. Because that's how it works. It's been reported that the Chinese communist regime is operating at least three illegal police stations in Canada, threatening Chinese Canadians and even coercing some to return to China. As we learn more, what is this government doing about these illegal Chinese communist sponsored police stations that constitute an assault on Canadian sovereignty? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable um, uh, Parliamentary Secretary Minister of Public Safety. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Protecting the public from the threat of foreign interference is precisely what Canadians have mandated this government to do. Our national security agencies are proactively working on threats from foreign bad actors such as China. Any harassment, intimidation and coercion by a foreign power will be investigated and appropriate charges will be laid. Canadians can rest assured that we will make sure no stone is unturned in our efforts to protect the public's safety and security. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Despite the statements of shock and surprise and firm rhetoric on how such a thing should never have been allowed to happen, all that is, is an admission that they knew this was wrong in the first place. So publicly, that is the position they will take when there's a camera in their face asking for a statement. But if you're going to try and tell me that none of these shocked people knew a thing about it, 
I'd ask you not to insult my intelligence. ...are operating out of three offices illegally opened in Canada, intimidating Canadians. So what is the government doing about these illegal police stations in Toronto? They know, and they collaborated in it by saying and doing absolutely nothing until the people who elect them to their jobs got wind of it. We've known for many years uh, that uh, there are uh, consistent engagements by uh, representatives of the Chinese government into uh, Canadian communities with local media, uh, reports of uh, illicit uh, Chinese police stations. These are all things that we continue to be concerned about, that our officials uh, stay active on, uh, and that we will continue to be vigilant around to keep Canadians safe. And they want to keep those nice, lazy jobs with all the power and none of the accountability that should come with it. Their disregard for their responsibilities is apparent in the fact that China ever had a single police station here in the first place. Because every single person with no nuts at all did nothing to stand up to it, while simultaneously posturing as the people's heroes. So bear that in mind. The next time you see a candidate talking tall, about how he will be the one to stand up to China and maybe check his donors list because chances are. And now the newest leaks say that Trudeau knew about the funding of Canadian political candidates by the Chinese government in 2019 because CSIS warned them at the time. A senior intelligence official told Global News CSIS shared their concerns about Dong in late September 2019 during a classified briefing with senior Liberal Party staff who hold security clearances. So we're running candidates who may have more allegiance to the wishes of the CCP than to Canada. And there are secret police stations popping up everywhere and clear intimidation happening on Canadian soil on behalf of Beijing. And that's not where the interference ends. Because then comes the economy and resources. For example, China managed to build up stakes in 27 Canadian mining companies. So while countries all over the world are competing to shore up reserves of the materials they are going to need to comply with the globalist climate agenda, the Chinese are stripping out as much lithium as they could get their hands on before anyone suggested, maybe this is a bad idea. But even then, there always happens to be someone on their side in just the right position to make things happen. In this case, the Liberals argued that the company was not really Canadian, only on paper making no mention at all as to whether the actual mining would be stripping resources from Canadian soil. But hey, nothing to see here. And once again, they were allowed to take full advantage before protections were put in place. Then there's the housing and property market. Because as recently as 2015, Chinese buyers owned one third of Vancouver's real estate market and conducted 14% of purchases in the Toronto market. So again, it's like a flash sale. A limited amount of time where foreign investment is protected because no one has really noticed yet, and no one is putting together the pieces that are being amassed by China until they've taken one hell of a chunk. And when it does get spotted, then starts the outrage and finally something gets done. But with mining, as with housing, it's a bit like closing the barn door when the horse is already bolted because they got most of what they came for. They're happy. Somehow China can lift a fortune in property and resources before governments can lift a finger to do anything about it. And here we are again. The latest liberal connection to China that we are now racist for even asking about. And since we're circling back to election interference, let's circle all the way back to two years before Trudeau even became prime minister. Oh my goodness, how did that get in there? That's from 2019, and there is definitely nothing to see there. Absolutely not, and we can move right on. CSIS believed it was being targeted in a foreign influence operation using Zhang Bin as a proxy. Zhang Bing is a political advisor to the Chinese government, as well as a billionaire businessman. And he gave $1 million to the Trudeau Foundation. Zhang Bing was instructed to donate the amount and would be reimbursed by the Chinese government which is the only part about this that surprises me at all, that it would be reimbursed, that is. I thought they would have made him pay and reminded him that that's the cost of doing business and staying in their favor. I guess they must really like him. 
and I can see why, because he was effective. Within a month of attending a fundraiser with Trudeau, the money was sent and good relations sealed. Reports today detail major corporations lobbying the Liberals for fav favours are at the same time making massive donations to the Trudeau Foundation. Mm -hmm. In fact, since mm -hmm. the Prime Minister came to power, money has rained down on the Foundation. Mr. Speaker, Canadians detest corruption. Which brings us to now, into everything. All the blind eyes turned as resources were stripped, housing and land secured and elections influenced, and all those things went way too far before anyone so much as sniffed at it. So now we have this guy. A sign of things to come? If they can't buy our politicians, they'll run their own? How many resources were mined before it was stopped? How many houses bought? How many parcels of land taken up? And with that in mind, how many seats and votes do you think they would need to occupy in Parliament before someone bothers lifting a finger? Because we've got an election coming. Ten years ago, the dictatorship in Beijing gave the Trudeau Foundation $200,000. They then interfered in two elections to help keep the Liberals in power. They've even helped campaign for certain Liberal candidates. What's the solution now? The Prime Minister proposes a secret committee. They will do a secret investigation with secret outcomes. Mr. Speaker, this committee will follow the rule of Fight Club. First rule is no one talks about the committee. Why is the Prime Minister trying so hard to keep everything so secret? And Pierre Polyev is the front runner in this thing. And regardless of how you or anyone else might feel about that, we already have an idea how China feels and they don't want it. They want what they already have, which is the clearest indication possible that our current leadership structure is infested with Chinese influence. And I'm not okay with China feeling like they have any control over our government. Because that's when they start dictating policy. And we already have enough of that. Because if it's not the Chinese, it's globalism and the WEF and Lord knows how many other unelected, power-hungry lunatics with delusions of grandeur who have decided we need to serve them. So I don't particularly care what entity is behind any influence on our government because I'm too busy being outraged that our government is open to being influenced at all. And anyone who took a penny bent a rule, changed a policy, or pushed against the good of us for the benefit of them, should be removed from office and made to publicly stand trial for their betrayal. But that's just me. No, oh, by the way, he's going to appoint a special rapporteur, which of course will be another establishment liberal, appointed by him, that will come out and say, everything is fine, let's just close the book. It is actually incredible that we have this uprising at our intelligence body. This has never happened before. They must be very worried about how the Prime Minister is working against the interests of his own country and his own people. They've been warning him for years about this. And what has he done? He's covered it up, even encouraged it to continue. And what is Trudeau's priority? Not to stop the foreign interference. No, that's not the problem for him. The problem is the whistleblowers. But he's, he's against a real investigation into the foreign interference we know happened, but in favor of a tough police investigation into the whistleblowers who are exposing it. And now Trudeau is asking CSIS to do an investigation. Who did that? Into CSIS, not into CSIS. China. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you would like to follow me on YouTube, Twitter, or Rumble, you will find links to all of those things in the description. Thanks again for watching. And God bless.